Thanks to Dara, though, the first one to fall to the approaching Art of War team. Diana in the back line gets a big ultimate. He stays alive with the bailout as well. Finally goes down to Fatal and the Pro DH. But again, it is a three for one in favor of Art of War. And man, this is going to be hard to overcome. Yeah, I thought they were going to get the dragon too, but PTP manages to just get it there. But you can finally get a little bit more control, push your vision line up a little bit. Ooh, and our nice almost. Stuff. Oh my god, those rockets a foot off to the right do not hit anybody. Meanwhile, the top lane, though, it's a 1v1 between Tadeus and Biggest Deacus. Flash forward from Tadeus, a one more Cho'Gath ultimate key. Camille Q will do it. Tadeus, the one man, the one DPS character left alive. Pro DH, Heimerdinger, he's not going to be able to do too much. Gets charmed up again. It's a Tour de Force from Art of War Esports. There from AWE PDP thought they found their moment, had he burned all these ultimates, thought, hey, we fiddle ulted onto 5 people, we've got this, but unfortunately, they're just too far behind, and it is going to be, ah, oh, moving up to 2 and 0. Oh. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm Ultravox back here, and I've got with me my friend, teammate, and co-caster Zen Zen. We're going to be bringing you the action for Clown9 versus RLS, taking the guise of really late sign-up. Zen Zen, how do you feel today? I am feeling fantastic. It's great to be back for Friend or Foe Season 6. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch the broadcast yesterday. But today, I am so pumped to see so many new teams, uh, new configurations enter the Heroic League and see what they're able to bring to the table. Uh, Clown9, this whole new squad that I've never interacted with whatsoever. This is going to be my first time watching them play, and I cannot wait to see what they're going to bring to the table. Yeah, I hear that their support is a big wild card. The CEO of Bard apparently highly favors Bard, but we did see them play some off meta stuff uh, yesterday. Uh, they had a Vigar support. They like the unorthodox stuff. Uh, reminds me of Bob Joseph, but we'll have to see how they're able to carve out their own identity. Meanwhile, the bands are flying through. We do have a Sivir band, thank the good Lord above, and Yumi hovered for RLS. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think this is an homage to uh, RLS's new coach, Jeff God Gamer, of course, of UB fame, sort of stepping into that advisory role uh, as Jeff God Gamer has promoted himself into the Mythic League. But i uh, going to go ahead and lock in the Bard band to, to round things out. And, you know, one of the things that's so interesting about this sort of league format that we have is that these early weeks really start to define what the metagame is going to shape out to be for the coming seasons. Um, and with very little information, with only one game under their belt, banning away a character's one trick or like their best champion, always a good way to start things off. And Clown9, B1 Nunu, let's go. Oh, and is Jeff going to actually draft Yumi or is he just hovering it to show his love for everybody's favorite cat? I do like the B1 Nunu though. I want to see if Frownin's going to be able to make this work, just have that non-stop snowball gank pressure. Trundle, classic counter pick into Nunu. We've seen this a lot. You steal all the tank stats and you start bunching people. Yeah, I mean, this is something that has been used to great effect uh, against our own team. Yes, <laughs> Spencer, we are very familiar with the, with the Trundle Piddle interaction. Um, completely shuts down the Nunu snowball. So um, RLS making, a, making an intelligent decision there. I also like uh, Trundle early on in these drafts because in recent seasons we've seen that trundle can not only be an effective jungler um, but also a pretty strong top laner in their own right so they're not giving away too much uh by locking in the character here um other than that you know they might want like a stronger engage tool than just running at them in a straight line um, but this is really solid from from really late sign up i like what they're putting together now again clown nine i have no idea what's coming out of here and atrox is going to be the answer interesting i like it yeah, I like this too. If they do decide to flex the tunnel of the top lane, I'm inclined to believe that Aatrox has a pretty good matchup against it just because of the lack of resist that he tends to build and the early dominance uh, from his kit. So I do like that. Gives Clown9 some more flexibility there. Gonna have to see what they're picking up for their third character here. I do think that, okay, Karma hovered and locked in. Now on the other side, Utility Monster friend of Jeff Guy Gamer has been extolling the virtues of Brom Caitlin for a, 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 a while now. So interesting to see if they will pick that up to match. 
Yeah. Um, and speaking speaking briefly about this Karma pick, I think that it fits well with what Cloud9 has already sort of developed their their early strategy to be. You know, they have these two bruisers who are very strong if they can get into the fight, but maybe struggle, like might get kited out by longer range or perhaps not have the... Uh, you know, speed to be able to close the gap and get into those brawling situations. Um, so I really like that their inclusion of the Karma um, just to give that option. And it looks like Shivana going to be locked in for War Leader. So that is going to solidify. Um, we know uh, that these tr this Trunnel and Shivana are absolutely going into the top half of the map. Um, and this Braum is guaranteed for escape. So uh, RLS sort of showing their hand in their last pick. And now they're going to go ahead and look towards banning out those mid and 80 carry threats uh, that they're worried about. Yeah, Jin gonna be hovered as the last ban for RLS. Uh, don't exactly know what Music Boy plays just yet. Again, I'm also not familiar with Clown9 very uh, thoroughly, much like you, so gonna have to see what it will be. I like all of the Yumi flashes we've seen throughout the game. I, uh, you know, it's nice when the teams give a nod to each other, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> We know. I know that the league is called friend or foe esports, but like really, it's just friends and friends and more friends. I feel you know the later that the seasons have developed, we've sort of all uh, developed a community and and had a lot of fun sort of interacting with each other and, and throwing you know throwing nods to one another. So that's fantastic. And it does look like RLS going to go ahead and lock in that Caitlyn Braum again. Very powerful, very safe bottom lane combination as well. There's not a whole lot. Um, that really engages into that. So uh, Teff and Escape are going to have a grand time farming up that lane. Cloud9, though, they need to lock in uh, what the back line of their composition is going to be. And we love to see a Jinx here for Cloud9, just bringing the damage to try and bust through uh, the Shivana and Trundle. Um, interesting to see what they're going to round out their composition with. Yeah, Jinx, everybody's going to be moving real fast for Clown9. They've got all the speed in the world on that team, especially after a kill. Last pick going over to the mid laner. Let's see if they choose somebody equally speedy. Annie, yeah, kind of with her E, her new E. So you're able to utilize that alongside the Karma Shield, get in range for some serious stuns. Do like that. And it's now a formidable team fighting cop. Yeah, absolutely. Clown9 uh, came here uh, to, to clown on their opponents, I think, uh, with these <laughs> with a really strong and, and, and uh, simple to execute composition. And I think that that simplicity uh, can be an absolute strength. Um, as we see the hover, okay, the Talia going to be locked in for RLS Ruby, one of my personal favorites, so very excited to see that. But back to Clown9. Um, I really like the simplicity of their composition. Um, these characters are powerful. Uh, they work well together. You have a bunch of movement speed with Karma and Annie to try and lock things down. You've got a solid front line, and then Jinx hopefully cleans things up. And I think that simplicity, especially when you're entering you know, an early uh, match into the season, is going to be a massive strength for them because you can just execute what your characters want to do and you're going to be fine you don't have to think about anything particularly fancy just got to play the game uh have some moderate success and i think clown nine is in a good position against these veterans from rls definitely definitely yeah the simplicity speaks volumes couldn't agree anymore let's see what happens in this game let's get onto the rift and see what these teams are going to start doing here i would like to see a lot of early pressure from RLS. They have War Leader on Trundle, notoriously known for the early game ganking power too. Want to see uh, Tef and Escape utilize their their uh, aggressiveness in lane to try to get an edge and start moving Escape around the map. I would really like that. And then also Talia, again, a premier roaming character, of course. So big flexibility available for RLS in the early game. Yeah, one thing that I really love about watching RLS... Oh... Just going to walk in for an invade here. Nothing too crazy should happen here. Um, but going back to my point, I mean, RLS very famously is like a, a, a long-standing member of the friend or foe community. And one of the things that's really great is that they have a really deep uh, pool of players who know and trust and have played with each other for a really long time. Um, and, and we see different combinations of that throughout the seasons, right? This particular iteration of RLS, I'm very excited to see how things shake out. Um, RLS Ruby has been a fantastic uh, member of the team coming in to substitute on various occasions, but um, I don't believe that I've seen her 
or, or seen them take uh, take center stage in the mid lane um, before. So I'm interested to see on one of my favorite characters where this Talia is going to dedicate those first uh, Weaver's Walls to try and influence this map. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, a lot of eyes on Ruby in this match. I, I'm right there with you. I want to see him get all over the place. So uh, unlock the Talia power. Get out on the map and, and do some stuff. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, we have the junglers starting on opposite quadrants here. Uh, Frownen will be clearing out the red buff first, as will Warleader. Uh, option for a level 2 gank in top to try to run down Aatrox. Potentially the same thing in bot lane here for C9, but it will be significantly worse. Yeah. Um, if I'm Clown9, my focus in this early game is to try and farm up and protect this Jinx. Uh, make sure that they're strong and able to, to survive the laning phase as the level 2 does come through. Flash forward! Escape getting aggressive. That's exactly what I like to see. Guardian even going to be eating some of the re return damage there. And it's already a massive lead so far for the bot lane of RLS. Uh, without Music Boy's Flash. Also, this is a great gank target. Potentially even for an early dive if they're feeling spicy. Yeah, and the way will be bouncing back out, so uh, should be pushing when Warleader finishes his camp. But um, back to what I was saying for Clown9, I think what they want to do is they want to um, get some early pressure applied with this Nunu up towards the top side, get um, get the Jawa she dated as far ahead as he can, because uh, RLS, they don't really want to side lane all that much, um, with the exception of Shivana. Shivana's pretty happy to side lane, but you don't want to send your jungler there. Um, and Talia is not a great uh, matchup into the Aatrox, could get run down in the later stages of this game. Um, so my eyes on Clown9, as Frownen approaches the top side of the map, I'm interested to see how he sort of passes these out and where he decides to go, to go whether he's going to go for a top gank or maybe try and run around in that mid lane. Yeah, the prospects of a mid gank might be just a little bit better as the wave bounces. Uh, gonna have to see. It's just a full clear so far from uh, Warleader. Actually, he skipped Raptors, not very good at taking those early on as Trundle. Seems like Frownen will be skipping his Gromp as well to take oh, this there's toppling a Scuttle Crab. And in mid, there's Warleader rolling up. Pillar comes out. No summoner spells expended on either side, though, and it will not end in anything. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, RLS, Taff, and Escape doing a great job in the bottom side, able to pick up uh, a 10 CS lead just from that early aggressive flash from Escape. So um, really trying to leverage their experience and and push, uh, you know, every advantage they can. They also are able to get um, a back in as well. Um, only about a 200 gold lead, but at this early end, you're pretty happy to take that. 100%, yeah. And we also saw in Tef's inventory that they picked up a coal. That's further the influence of Coach Jeff shining through. Uh, if you're able to just farm that out, collect some money, going to be just easy ride out there. For Here Tef. comes the snowball. Yeah, and First Anti game. could be in trouble. There's the knockup. Frown and Will try to lock down Anti. Ghost has been popped, but Anti is rooted out. Tries to trade some damage back. War Leader's waiting in the wings. He will show his face and scare away the duo from C9 here. Ultimately, nobody going down. War Leader arrives in the nick of time. I cannot believe that Anti was just able to walk. He just, he just, you know, wiggled his way back and forth in the bush for a little bit and was totally fine. I thought for sure, with two flashes available from both Frownen and the Java she dated, that uh, they'd be able to lock down Anti. But with the fancy feet, he's able to dodge out the majority of the damage from Aatrox and is able to walk away scot-free. Yeah, definitely. I Also, this bot lane here, I can't help but notice the aggression from... Karma is the CEO of Bard. I really like that. Taking advantage of RLS of RLS escape not being in lane, trying to get a little bit of extra damage onto Tef, just buying more space for Music Boy. I I, I, I gotta call that very intelligent support play. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you love to see support players who are really familiar with the matchups. Um, you know that that are that they're running into in these games. Flash forward, not gonna connect though in the mid lane. I like the idea. Immediate six. You try to make the play onto Ruby. Ruby, though, going to spot that one out. But um, back to my earlier point, Karma is a champion that can absolutely be a massive bully in the bottom lane. Um, 
And knowing that you have the numbers advantage if escape is going to move and roam to these places, I really like how the CEO of Bard uh, steps forward immediately when escape is elsewhere on the map to try and apply pressure and give uh, Music Boy the, the space he needs to succeed. Yeah, it's all about buying space for Music Boy this game. You got to give the Jinx the resources they need to scale up, get the items, be the damage dealer, and carry the team. Now, we've got War Leader just roaming around on the bot side. Looks like RLS wants to go for an early dragon here, and they will be starting it up with help from Ruby. Looks like it'll go down pretty easily, and Frownin will not opt to contest this one. Yeah, and this is one of the strengths of Talia as a champion. You can see Ruby um, making full use of the threat of the Weaver's Wall to establish uh, the, the vision that we need in order to get this done. Um, War Leader steps on a, steps on a ward, uh, threatening a gank in the bottom side. That forces Clown9 to back up because Ruby is also um, you know, not in vision. That means they are able to clear out the vision with the pink ward and then easily take that dragon without any problems whatsoever. Although, flash forward from Tef, locks down CEO of Bard, Music Boy, has to flash away as well, pops the heal to try to stay alive. Ignite comes out a little bit late, and Pillar is there as well to interrupt Frown and Snowball. War Leader doing a great job assisting his team. Music Boy's still so low, and they're trying to get in on the Tef here. Damage doesn't land, Escape blocks it. Thanks to Braum's big shield, Frown is so low, Escape goes forward, and Music Boy gets flashed on by Escape. Ignite will be ticking though. The first blood goes over to C9, but they will trade away Music Boy's life for it. The top side too, Anti's fine on 1v1 versus the Jawash he dated, has to ult out over the wall. And he's on the way. Gonza trying to lock down Antai, but he's too <sighs> far away. Here comes the Weaver's Wall, though. Ruby, just a little bit of extra insurance. The wall had to come in from another time zone. Yeah, gotta gotta make sure that you help out your your scaly dragon friend up on the top side. So doing doing their best um, to try and help things out. But action all around the map. Um, Clown Nine. You know, in that bottom side, it felt like uh, Frownin's aggression on the Nunu was a little, maybe a little bit too much. Um, just didn't quite have the follow-up because Music Boy had been taken so low. Um, ultimately, though, a one-for-one -one trade, although crucially, um, Taff manages to soak a massive uh, set of experience and gold from minions out of that and has continued to hold that lead at about 10 CS. Um, so still looking good for RLS on that bottom side. Tef still has not backed. Very surprising. Hopefully the opportunity should be coming up soon. They've got War Leader down here to help cover that, that recall. And it will be a lot of money in Tef's pockets. Noon Quiver incoming. Going to be even more brutal poke uh, for Music Boy and CEO of Bard to deal with. Want to see uh, RLS's bot lane continue to push this lead. Try to push in and get those turret plates. And, and just crush C9 before them. <laughs> Yeah, I do like how Frannon is being proactive about um, the objectives that he or, or that they have access to in the in the jungle. Though, are going to go ahead and wander down to take this Rift Herald. Anti going to start up a, a soft freeze here um, because the Jawashi dated walked down to help. But um, yeah, smooth sailing so far for uh, Frown and had a little bit of unfortunate, uh, you know. Uh, altercation in the bottom lane, but able to pick up that Rift Herald and sort of recover and seems to be doing just fine. Yeah, keeping up in CS. It's looking good. You're going to be able to use the Rift Herald to get some more money as well. Start uh, equaling out uh, the the objective differential here. You know, one dragon over to RLS starts to mean a lot more than it did just a few patches ago. So they're comfy with their plan of dragon stacking. They're using their bot lane power to, to, to that end, trying to finish out the Dragon Soul. But in the mid lane, oh, here we go. Frownin's making something happen. Starts to lock down Ruby. There's the stun and the damage to follow it up. Gonza takes down Ruby. And Frownin will tank the turret and eat a minion and take a lot of damage and just get beaten to death by War Leader. That didn't seem so good. Uh, yeah, in, in my professional expert opinion, that did not seem like the optimal play. Did the job of the data just gonna die? Just, just obliterated. Did. The dragon in a, in an is instant. so strong. Oh my goodness! Chomp, yeah, chomp. Wow. All, all anti has is treads and tank items. Two. What the heck is that? That's a that's a scary dragon, I guess. I mean, level 
uh, you know, post level six Shivana is no joke in the top lane, particularly with press the attack. Uh, and the Jawa that did it, you could see that they were kind of surprised. They were like, "Wait, what happened? <laughs> Hold what, on, what I thought this? I thought I was winning this trade, and then and then there was a <laughs> dragon on top of me, and then I and then I'm dead. That's not that's not cool." Uh, yeah, yeah. But RLS, I, I respect that RLS is taking taking the victories where they can take them, right? Really trying to eke out um, every advantage that they can. Um, Warleader able to to find Frownen in the mid lane and Anti able to find a kill in the top lane um, means that this top half of the map is not nearly as strong as I think Clown9 would hope to have at this stage of the game. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's going to be very difficult for the Jawashi data to keep up in the side lane here. Uh, so much of your power budget is just going to go out the window. I'm not even sure if uh, a Lethality Mythic is the right play versus the enemy team. I still would have liked to see Stridebreaker, I think, but I, it might be Eclipse coming out from the Aatrox here. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see what that's going to be like to... Um... My understanding of Aatrox builds, and granted, I, I was never much of an incredible top laner. Uh, actually, we'll talk about that later as we see a dragon fight breaking out. Yeah, Frown and rolling straight in. Pillar's gonna cut everybody off. Frown and gets stunned out, but a lot of damage goes out onto escape. He will fall. Music Boy exhausted, has to flash away. Ace in the hole lined up, but the CEO of Bard is a homie and blocks it out. On the other side of the fight, Gonza takes down War Leader alongside with the help from Frown and CEO of Bard wants a little bit more, gets some damage onto Tef. And the rocket coming in from Music Boy finishes that one off. Very well placed. Super Mega Death Rocket C9 is rewarded with the dragon. Yeah, and watch this again. Watch how well Clown9 executes their simple strategy here. Um, you know, they have these characters that can hit multiple knockups. They hit a huge ultimate uh, after the root from Frown. It makes this very easy. Warleader is chasing and chasing, but he doesn't know where to go. He's getting kited out. The rest of his team can't support him, and he's just going to die on the backside. Um, and this is a huge tempo swing because RLS was hoping to stack those dragons, um, and they're no longer able to. However, in the top side, Anti continuing to try and uh, snowball the lead that he has access to. But again, this simple but extremely effective composition that Clown9 has put together is starting to show its strength. It, it, it's instantly so, so good for C9. Like, this game is so heavily favored. They even get the Herald with the plates in the mid lane, too. That wave is already there and primed to go. Ruby can't clear much of it out. Some plates went over to Music Boy on Jinx as well. C9 starting to look like they're going to drag this game in their favor, whether RLS likes it or not. Would you say that they're trying to drag on the game in their favor? I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, RLS is the ones with the drag on. And I think nobody wants the game to drag on endlessly. The winners want to close it out fast, right? But I do understand Anti, he's got the dragon mode ready to go again as well. I want to see if he's able to find another solo kill onto the Jawa she dated. Yeah, um, this top lane is is becoming a problem for Clown9, unfortunately. Anti, you know, one of those uh, staples that we've seen in, in Friend or Foe has always been a very solid top laner in the Heroic League and continuing to show prowess here. Um, and, you know, I talked about how, like, this top side was going to be important in this game because... Uh, neither team really wants to side lane all that much. Um, you know, like, these are the side lane characters. And uh -huh. if if you generate a lead there, you're going to be uh, having access to that lead in that solo lane for the entire rest of the game. So the fact that Anti is up 20 farm now and a kill uh, means that unless Clown9 is able to shift some attention to him, uh, the Jawashi dated is going to be in a ton of trouble uh, the later this game goes. Yeah, a million percent. Things are starting to look kind of brutal in that department, but at least they're winning elsewhere on the map. They are starting to get some items onto Music Boy. The oh. fantastic pillar onto Gonza, War Leader, and Ruby making it happen, collecting a shutdown, even if it is a small one. More money going to the pockets of War Leader and Ruby. Yeah, and RLS want more. They're using their numbers to invade. Yeah, they're not done yet. Frownen has to get on out of there. Luckily, the phase rush will provide a lot of speed to sh move on away anti he's got his buddies there they're just taking all of the jungle camps denying every resource possible this is a potential dive if uh, jawa sticks around as well i don't like the pathing that much but 
It's okay. They can they can walk around and do other things. Yeah, looks like Ruby gonna call off the play and head back to the mid lane. Very happy to have completed that Luden's Echo and picked up a free kill in the jungle. But um, this is something that RLS had set up in advance. This is uh, you know a culmination of the advantage in top lane. You've seen that Anti uh, several times throughout this game on the minimap has been able to walk deeper and deeper into that top quadrant and place down pink wards and place down regular wards. Um, and so because of that vision that RLS has worked to establish, they're rewarded by that kill um, and uh -huh. continue to put pressure on the top side. Um, meanwhile, we do see first tower falling in bottom. Yeah. It's Frownen who's trying to find something, but gets stunned out. There's the trap from Tef. Will Keepers find wall. its mark. Frownen has to try to get on out of there. Ruby's found their way to the back line, though. Huge slamming on the Music Boy, but there's no damage to follow it up. Orly just trying to crawl towards him, but he cannot find anything. But Anti on the backside. The Dragon has arrived. Music Boy's life will not be dragging on. Anti now trying to run down CEO of Bar 2. Ace in the hole comes out. One more Dragon's Breath should do it. And oh. I can't find Oh, he does find it. He's crawling out with just a sliver of HP. Triumph makes sure he survives after that. Bot lane turn's going to go down, and it's a blowout for RLS. Yeah, huge victory for them. The only downside of that play is the Java she dated is going to earn a couple of plates or not even plates, just like some tower damage, but you could already see Escape responding, not going to allow that turret to go down without a fight. Um, huge, huge win from RLS, able to turn things around on the bottom side. Weaver's Wall completely shutting out uh, Frown, and he was sort of caught off guard, didn't expect to be locked down. Um, and then that buys enough time for Anda to complete the teleport and come back and clean up the rest of that play. So really good coordinated play from RLS. It's what they're known for. Um, Manages to turn this game once again right back into an even keeled game. Yeah, it's dead even in gold lead. Well, actually starting to grow up to a 1k gold lead for RLS. Scratch that. Oh, one dragon for either side, though. So, a big advantage there. Ruby forced to flash away in the top side, but lose out on the Nexus. The summoner spell escape might be going down here, gets rooted out, but he's able to jump over to the wall to war leader's waiting arms. We have the third dragon of the game. Imagine that they will be starting their assault on it and it's four members, five with a teleport as the Jawa joins down here with the rest of C9. Yeah, and Ruby would have to move very quickly. They do have access to the teleport if they want to use it, but it looks like RLS uh, giving up the position on the dragon here. Oh, they want the fight. Yeah, there's the Shirelia as the speed has been called in. Anti flies towards the back line. Music Boy has to flash away here, but now he's untouched, able to start putting out some big DPS. Ruby on the other side, now the target of Music Boy. He's still running around, barely surviving. Tef untouched as well. Both teams have done a great job of protecting their AD carry, but it's three members alive to Tef's one. Music Boy almost goes down, but it's a triple kill for C9's AD carry. They will wipe out RLS. And it's a roller coaster of a game, back and forth. Yeah, watch Tef's positioning in this game. I think it is so smart to go over this wall in order to keep themselves alive and also allow them to continue to hit. Um, so Gonzo is a first to flash over the wall. Tef follows because Gonzo doesn't have any additional things. He hits the blast cone to lock him in place. That's going to be an easy kill. Um, however, doing that does mean that the rest of RLS in the river um, doesn't have that backline support and falls instead. Um, but I really like that quick decision making from Tef to keep themselves alive for as long as they could uh, in this play. Unfortunately, doesn't work out in the end. A triple kill for Music Boy accelerates what Clown9 wants to do in this game, and they are looking strong in the first week. Uh, despite their despite their loss yesterday, this is looking like a good team for Hero. Definitely, definitely. I I really respect the confidence to call out RLS's bluff. They knew that they couldn't fight without Ruby being there, and the teleport was just way too late to try to join in on that fight. So, great initiative from CEO of Bard, popping that Shirelius and making the whole fight happen. That's exactly the kind of gameplay I want to see out of the F11 community. Yeah, especially since, I mean, this plays into Clown 9 strengths, right? They, they, they group up, and then they run at you in a straight line with Nunu, with Annie, uh, with Aatrox, and if you get <laughs> caught by that, 
Uh, you can't get out. There's too much stuns. There's too much CC. Um, so they knew what they needed to do in that in that moment, and they executed on it, and are rewarded with a second dragon, um, and tilting the gold lead back into their favor. Um, now both teams you see sort of pathing up towards that top side because the dragon will not be spawning for quite a while um the next objective to take a look at is that baron and although neither team has a particularly incredible dps you do want to make sure that people are unable to get there um and take care of it so that's why rls is pathing up to that side, towards that top side and getting as much vision down as they can yeah world leader moving up there is great they've got the jawa locked oh my attempt to get a lot of damage where's the rocket there it is it's coming out tef dodges it though just barely music boy starting to get big that's a two item jinx 400 gold bounty on their head and this is now the player to watch out for you have to put pressure on the music boy or else he will just run away with the game yeah, and here's the thing, RLS's composition doesn't necessarily do that very well, right? Um, Talia is not a character that, is not a mage that threatens backline threats, right? You just don't have the range to do that. Um, and Anti can come in and chomp as a Shivana, but you're having to fight through, um, you know, the new new route, plus shields from Karma, plus an Annie stun. That is just so difficult in the moment to try and connect, catch out uh, Music Boy's AD carry. So I think RLS have found themselves in a bit of a pickle, um, and they might want to transition to trying to split the map up instead of grouping together. Um, with a split map, Anti can continue to uh, you know, leverage his lead in the top side, but in a grouped fight, they're just going to get run over. Yeah, but Frown and he's activated the gas again. Going real fast, but... Look at all the resources committed from RLS. Frown and he might be going down, but it's a lot expended. Has to flash away. He's still so freaking fast. Oh my god. So much committed from RLS to try to get that kill. And it will not result in anything. They used Anti's TP to bring him on down here. It will open up the turret top side for the Jawa she dated. Meanwhile, Music Boy has got to defend this. Turret will go down, but it's turret for turret. Yeah, and losing that TP is absolutely huge because that shuts down oh, uh, the rocket that rocket. describing. Escape, he's so good. He he is something. You know, um, I heard that he this is like his support debut uh, in yeah. heroic, and it's been it's been really fun to watch him play thus far um, because we know him for that you know traditional eighty carry play. To see him step into that more supportive role uh, has been a lot of fun, and I know that he is uh, he is grinding out games. Let me tell you to try and you know do the best he can for his team. So um, oh, you man. love to see you know these FOF veterans step into new roles. I always think it's really exciting to see what they bring to the table. Yeah, yeah, I have I have infinite respect for another AD carry playing Spencer. I'd also like to m remark that uh, going from ADC to support is always like very easy because you just do the things that you'd want to be done for you as an AD carry player. You know, that's how that works. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you already know. And to to Tef's credit as well, uh, they have been working, you know, incredibly well so far in this game. Um, although the Jawa probably dead here. And time oh. Oh, will completely whiff the ult. That's uh, that's pretty tough there. Now Frownin's rolling him with the snowball. Jawa she dated the ult. The world breaker will run out. We'll try to put some damage in onto Anti, but there's just not really too much CC on either side or damage on the other. Can't quite finish out anything here. Oh, Music look at this! Will blast blast straight in. They see War Leader. They're just gonna start gunning him down. Chops Music Boy a little bit, but Jinx is too strong right now. That's powder from Arcane, everybody. Look at her go. They will take down Anti as well. And I think this is a Baron angle. Yeah, they could absolutely look for it if they wanted to. RLS is committing to the push on the bottom side, trying to get any towers down. Um, so if they wanted to commit to the Baron, they absolutely could without uh, contest. Instead, you're going to go ahead and just pick up the pick up the waves and prepare for the next dragon um but again you know music boy and and the ceo of bar doing a great job roaming around the map being in places that uh rls isn't prepared for them and continuing to accelerate that jinx uh accelerate that win condition and make it even harder for rls to um, really turn this game around yeah definitely definitely now the next dragon has spawned this is gonna be the fourth one uh, it's going to be up to RLS to try to bring this up to a tie or C9 and try to continue that lead. Music Boy Oof. takes a lot of damage to start out, and that is really tough to deal with. 
Now they might be vulnerable to anti, but they will heal up with some of the fruit off of the floor. They will start the dragon as well. We're stealing a slow and steady rate of DPS. Weaver's wall coming in. Ruby joining the fight. Frowning. Face tanking everything and escape flashes on a music boy. Exhaust goes out. It looks like it might be good oh, for Annie. LS. Escape going down. The Annie is just so big. But it's anybody's fight still. Jawashi dated going down. Gonza and the CEO of Bard are still left alive. It's going to be the mid laner and the jungler for RLS. Alongside had the mid laner and support for C9. War leader, he's the jungler. That's the character you need to take the dragon, though. Might be going on down. I cannot believe how even of a fight that was. That's insane. Yeah, absolutely. But RLS identified uh, the weakness in Clown 9's position. Clown 9 was not prepared to defend Music Boy in that spot. CEO of Bard should be able to walk out of here. But yeah, yeah. Um, this is what you need to do. You need to find that instant, that, that small window where Music Boy is exposed and just go full ham on it. Anti uh, ulting forward, um, escape flashing forward to try and secure that kill because that is uh, most of Clown 9's damage, right? And even though uh, Gonza, phenomenal Annie ult, stuns four, it's not enough because the damage profile isn't enough to finish things off. Um, and ultimately, Ruby and Warleader able to come out of that fight uh, with a big W. Um, and again, two dragons apiece, it's anyone's game. Uh, Ultra Box, this is, this is incredible. Yeah, this, this is what the people in the business refer to as a banger. Super close game. I think what you were talking about before with Gonza is why Chad is mentioning they'd like to see a, a different anti-mythic item. Could have been a completely different fight there if maybe there was a little bit more damage, huh? Oh yeah, um, that that is true. I think um, perhaps the Leandries would have been a, a really nice addition to uh, the repertoire here, just because you're, you know that you're going to be fighting into two tanks. But um, still, that the crown, you know, has seen some value, right? Like, does prevent the burst damage of an angry dragon yelling at you or getting <laughs> full comboed by Talia, right? It can be very unpleasant to play Annie in these types of games where you are very short ranged and uh -huh. there are people who can like very easily kill you from outside of your range or like just hop on top of you. Um, so I understand the instinct for the crown, um, but absolutely a Leandries perhaps would have. Uh, turn that fight uh, in a different way. But regardless, I'm um, checking into the, the stage of this game. We're 27 minutes in, 16 to 12, top turret finally falling. And now both teams um, are just kind of vibing for a bit until the next objective comes around. Um, Blue side does have better vision around the Baron, but they're not really in a position to take it uh, with Gonza on the bottom side. So I think we're just in for a chill hangout, you know, get the yeah, waves. Yeah. Crack, crack some cold ones, chill out with your minion homies. What could be better, right? It's a beautiful day on Summoner's Rift, roaming around the river with your 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 buds. We saw on the gold chart there that uh, Tef is actually almost catching up in gold to to Music Boy. It's just uh, about a 500 gold difference at this point, which not very significant. So both 80 carries keeping up to snuff there. Pretty significant lead though for Anti in the top lane, which has been consistent with what we've been seeing the whole time. War Leader, he wants to make something happen. The CEO of Bard under attack. War Leader, he's cut off by the Here's trap. Here's Anti from Let's behind! Anti the Dragon, Flankarino, trying to take down Music Boy. We'll get Brown in instead. Music Boy is still alive, still pumping oh out the damage. He's excited, he's running forward. It's a double kill so far. Zap finishes off Tap. Music Boy's not done yet. Put some more damage into Ruby. He's got to dodge all of the spells though, and he's doing exactly that. Pulled back. It's a quadra kill for Powder. Everybody's favorite AD carry. Music Boy wants to find the Penta kill, but War Leader's not giving it over. He's not that generous. Yeah, and look at how good this fight looks for RLS to begin with. Uh, War Leader knows that Music Boy is exposed in the bottom side, but they have access to that flash and they drop so low. But finally, the Jawashi did it, able to provide the space. Uh, that's required. Music Boy just doesn't quite die, refuses to die, and now you've got Karma Steroids on uh, an incredibly strong Jinx, and there's nothing that RLS can do as Music Boy cleans this up. Um, what a fantastic fight. Um, and RLS, I don't hate their instincts there, right? They made yeah. the correct call. They're going for those moments. Uh, unfortunately, there, they just don't quite have enough to secure the kill and turn the fight around. 
Yeah, the margins are just so small on that play. I think even if they had one less Mountain Drake, Music Boy just, boom, out of there. But the fact of the matter is, in the current game state, that's a quadra kill for the Jinx. And man, that's going to be tough to deal with. Yeah, I cannot wait to see Music Boy recall. Uh, 2,700 gold, that's a nice chunk of change. Uh, gonna work their way into yet another item. And, you know, we were just talking about Tef, like, trying to ramp up to match this Jinx, but you have to remember, um, Caitlyn is one of those characters that has that sort of fall-off period, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it's like, this stage of the game is about when they're supposed to slowly ramp back up, uh, but they're definitely not there yet, especially when compared to Music Boy, who's added another BF sword um, and a pickaxe working towards that Infinity Edge. And if that Infinity Edge completes before the next fight, uh, I would not want to be on RLS for that. That sounds abysmal to try and fight into it. Yeah, so tough. Like you were saying before, just so little backline access available to try to make these fights happen. Frown and he's so fast, finds the knock up on the two. Music Boy stunned out though. Nope. Takes a lot of damage, has to flash over the wall, just a sliver of HP left. Ace in the hole is locked on, but somebody took the, the hit. Gonza the hero saves Music Boy's life. We'll keep him rolling. Shutdown does not go over, but does mean that RLS might be able to find this dragon relatively uncontested yeah um dragon uh, the timers they, they may have been mistaken but they said that there was about a minute left but i can see that it's yellow dragon about to spawn and music boy not here so see clown nine gonna have to have to be very very careful to not overplay their hand here in the choke because if they fight without their jinx they're gonna have huge problems dragon's going down the super mega death rocket hits good smite from war leader to secure it now it's three dragons to two in favor of RLS. Music oh. Boy is walking oh. so far forward. Aggressive flash from escape. Music Boy is knocked up. That's such a critical misstep. It's a disaster now for C9. So much pushing power available from RLS. Caitlyn just eats these turrets for breakfast. Now they want to contest it as well. Getting slowed down a little bit. The anti oh, goes completely wide. Tibbers can't find anybody. We'll slap Tef around a little bit. Hindsight, but... Not too much in favor of C9 right now. Ace in the hole goes out. It's a little dip, bit of damage to Frownin. Tower gonna be dropping to it pretty low, and Warleader snapped back to reality thanks to the chains from Aatrox. Well done to repel the push from RLS. C9 is hanging on. Yeah, um, and like that moment is so scary if you're a Clown 9 fan because. Um, <laughs> If that push goes a little bit differently, like if perhaps Frownin gets caught by like a, a Talia W or something, um, you can you can absolutely lose the game there. Like I know it, I, I know that may not like that might seem over dramatic, but RLS you know does have a lot of dive potential with Escape and with War Leader uh, when they choose to activate, especially when you're undermanned. Um, but Clown9, thankfully, able to stave off the push. Um, the Jawashi dated being pretty on point with the Aatrox combos. And so far, that's been able to uh, really slow down the approach of these big bruisery guys. Um, and that will ultimately mean that Clown9 hold on to their base for now. Yeah, they're, they're hanging on just a little bit longer. Cannot afford another mistake like that from Music Boy. It will be so hard to come back if something else like that happens. Surprised that neither team has really looked too hard at Baron so far. I feel like this is something that they'd want to be pushing harder for. We see Gonza in the bot lane packing the TP though, so still able to join a fight if necessary. Yeah, both teams, I think neither team has felt confident starting up the Baron because they've had... Uh, you know, awkward experiences around river fights in this game, particularly around the dragon. Um, as we see a fight break out. For anti, anti. Surge is for in the dragon form. Here comes the knockup, the CC. Not a whole lot of damage to follow it up. You gotta watch Music Boy here. Take some damage from the Piltover Peacemaker. And escape is right there. Ace in the hole. There's no one to save him this time. Music Boy obliterated. Take it down. War leader now slapping around the Jawa. Using that huge baseball bat to great effect, but gets stunned up by Gonza, almost deleted from Summoner's Rift. The health bars are so low on the side of C9, but they cannot finish him off. RLS instead moving backwards. Maybe now it's time for Baron. We'll be starting it up, taking out the vision first. The Scuttle Crab is there, so it does seem like C9 knows exactly what's going on. 
but Baron falls. There's nothing they can do to contest an RLS. Puts 300 gold into the pocket of each member. I'm just going to take a moment and gush a little bit about Ruby's Talia play in this game, because holy cow, was that a phenomenal Weaver's Wall. Um, often with a Weaver's Wall in the middle of combat, it can be difficult to figure out what you're trying to do, what your objective is. Um, but what you really need to do is create space for your team. Uh, and Ruby separated Music Boy from the entire rest of Clown 9. And that meant that Music Boy could not, he didn't have anywhere to go. I don't know if you saw that, but he has yeah. Ruby behind him. He's got Escape on top of him. And he's got Tef like sort of off, you know, American sniper hanging out <laughs> in the wings, just ready, ready to take him out. And like, that's exactly what she, that, that would be the ideal Talia ultimate is the one that just completely cuts down the, the team uh, distorts them, makes them confused and, and unable to, to respond. And RLS wins big with that fight. Yeah, I'm so glad you pointed out because the thing I noticed most was just how alone Music Boy was. You know, he, we got him surrounded, everybody, it's time to move in, and then RLS just dumpsters him. So I love the way you put it. Ruby, fantastic job this game so far. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Um, so now we see, uh, taking stock of the game, we have a few, uh, a little bit of time before this next dragon. Um, again, this is still anyone's game. Clown9, you know, has gotten to this point with a massive, massive lead. Red Pot in the inventory from Music Boy because he wants to smash fights. And honestly, who can blame him? Uh, but they're going to have to be really careful around this dragon. They don't want to be split up uh, like they just were in that previous fight. Yeah, it's earlier taking a little bit of poke. Meanwhile, in the top lane too, we got the side lane pressure like we were talking about from Anti with that lead. But right now here in the bot side, traps will stop the snowball. One of the reasons why Caitlyn is picked common lane and Nunu as well. We didn't mention that in champion select, but it's very relevant. Just trap him out, prevent the engage. It does seem like that's exactly what uh, C9 is trying to do here. They're trying to establish control of this fight, but a slower fight goes in favor of RLS. Yeah, I will note that RLS gave up their choke point, though, right? They were trying to hold RLS, or they were trying to hold Clown9 in the river, um, but gave up where the trap line was, have to reestablish it near the dragon. Um, and that gives RLS the ability to dance in like this. Ruby going to fix the mid wave and come back in here as we're back to the dance. But here comes the Double TP teleport. from both teams. Yeah, it's going to be a flank, but they've already caught out the Jawa she dated. The health bar is already so low, and Ruby just takes that kill, puts it in their pocket. Anti now, dragon forward. This is it. Gonza under assault. You got to look at Music Boy, though. Here comes the Weaver's Wall on the backside. Ruby's got a huge flank. Music Boy's going down, and that looks like it might be it for C9, the CEO of Bard. Last man left alive, stalling for as much time as possible. Dragon could be going down, but no. RLS has their sights set on the Nexus. They know exactly what they want, and they're going to take it. Yeah, charging forward, trying to finish out the game. And with 30 seconds on the death timer of Music Boy, I think that they're going to be able to get at least double inhibitor, if not more. But um, again, RLS really showing their veterancy in these fights because it can be really difficult on stage uh, you know, in the early games of a season to really know exactly how to execute your composition. And I feel like Clown9, they've played a phenomenal game, but uh, they're just finding these windows where they're just slightly outmatched, right? That teleport from the Jawa she did, it was not quite good enough, had already been chunked out by, by Anti, means that RLS is going to accelerate their lead, get the Dragon Soul and two inhibitors as a reward. Yeah, so tough to come back from here. You're just trapped inside your base for an extremely long amount of time. I definitely wouldn't want to be in the position that Clown9 is in here. They have the potential for the team fight wombo combo. We've seen it. Music Boys still just getting stronger, but you know, they they have so much pressure put on them. We've seen Ruby's great flanks, huge engages from Escape. I don't know if they're going to be able to come back from this. Yeah, and crucially, this is about the period in time at which Clown9's frontline starts to fall off a little. Um, Frownin, unfortunately, you know, hasn't been able to secure any kills for himself, so even though they've been a great supporting member of the team, uh, you look at their inventory and they're kind of in Povertyville right now, right? <laughs> just just sitting on just sitting on a cape 
and some armor and, and like trying to do their best, but that's not going to hold up against Tapa long term. Gets knocked back. Frown and taking a lot of damage. Flash forward, but the shields from CEO of Bard are enormous. Tower will go down. Even more pressure all around the map. That C9 cannot deal with here. Dipper's going to be going down too. Goodbye to the teddy bear. Music boy is trying to clear out this wave. Yeah, Cloud9 should have a little bit of moment here because of the waves. They at least managed to push the waves out ahead of time, so they have this opportunity to get Frown into recall. Um, but this is start to become a very dangerous and difficult siege in just a few moments. Oh, look at this oh! is Gale Force away, though. Escape will be taking the L for the team. Ward Leader might be going down too, but he's able to link up with Anti. Pillar comes out trying to buy some space. Weaver's Wall will cut everybody off too. And that was very risky for RLS. Now they're down a man. Rom not present in the fight here, and they're still trying to pressure this out. But C9 has to back up. They have to attend to the waves attacking their Nexus turret. Have to send at least one person to clear that. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Annie, not the greatest uh, clear, as well as the draw she dated. So RLS, uh, despite being down a man, able to continue to apply pressure here. Um, and not willing to give up this favorable position. Music Boy, though, all eyes on him. No flash available. Yeah, it's so difficult to play this here. Anti's taking a lot of damage, but he's given a lot in return. That Demonic Embrace is doing so much. War Leader also just obliterating the turret, taking it down with a mighty chomp. They will secure the third inhibitor as well. But Frownin, he's fast. He's coming back from the Nexus. Anti's already in dragon form. Puts a huge amount of damage on a Music Boy. And now Tef is looking to clean this fight up. It's a complete reversal from before. Music Boy can't get off the ground. And Tef just deletes everybody alongside Ruby. RLS taking down the turrets. Taking down the Nexus. And taking home the game. RLS, what a way to clutch out a difficult game uh, in day two of season six. Uh, they know exactly what they need to do to execute and secure this game, and they, they follow through. They find Music Boy time and time and time again. We talked about how, you know, well, I mean, Anti can go in, but it's going to be a problem because he, he has to, like, go through an Annie stun. He has to go through, like, a Karma shield. He didn't care, man. He was oh, just on not. top the entire game. Uh, and tr and even if he doesn't get the kill, as you saw in that final team fight, if you get Music Boy down to like sub 200 HP, he's as good as dead, right? He can't yeah. provide that consistent DPS that Clown9 needs to succeed. Um, what a phenomenal game. Uh, I'm so glad that this is the first game that I got the cast of season six. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, couldn't have said it any better. Big props to RLS. This is what I'd expect. Sasuga RLS. The team made it to the finals last season. I'm looking for some dominance this time. Let's go. All right. But don't go anywhere. Chat, dear viewers. We will be back with the last match for the day in just a bit.